West to Harmin Freon and welcome to yet another video. I have to thank my viewers for this one because I can't follow everything, of course, especially since I try to be not present on social media as much as possible. And it's great when somebody puts a comment under one of my videos. Oh, you should check this out. Have you heard about this? And I say, oh, no, it's a great idea for a video. And finally, we have some positive news from the world of fantasy. Once again, concerning the all-time favorite, our beloved Professor Tolkien. And it concerns um, a manuscript that was found quite recently and was thought to be lost. So let us dive into the article at theguardian.com. Hordes of the Rings lost scripts for BBC Tolkien drama discovered. Original manuscripts show how author rewrote scenes for 1950s adaptation of his Middle-earth epic, Lord of the Rings. Decades before Peter Jackson directed his epic adaptations of The Lord of the Rings, J.R.R. Tolkien was involved with the first ever dramatization of his trilogy, but its significance was not realized in the 1950s and the BBC's audio recordings are believed to uh, have been destroyed. Now, an Oxford academic has delved into the BBC archives and discovered the original scripts for the two series of 12 radio episodes broadcast in 1955 and 1956 to the excitement of fellow scholars. Tolkien's fantasy masterpiece was dramatized by producer Terence Tiller, whose scribbled markings on the manuscript no doubt reflect his detailed discussions with the author in correspondence and meetings. Among the typed pa uh, pages is a sheet in Tolkien's hand, with red crossings out showing his own reworking of a scene. Stuart Lee, a reader in the English faculty at Oxford University, said, They said the scripts had been lost, but they have survived. The only professional dramatization of The Lord of the Rings made during his, that Tolkien that is, lifetime. It was not seen as important by the BBC then. It shows how reception of the book has changed. Minor interest in 1955-56, now a global phenomenon, with Amazon reportedly investing more than $1 billion in latest series. Lee's discovery will feature in the forthcoming new book, The Great Tales Never End, Essays in Memory of Christopher Tolkien, in which academics pay tribute to to the scholarship of Tolkien's devoted son and literary executor who died in 2020. Now that book, my friends, I am going to buy. The book, to be published in June by Bodleian Library Publishing, is co-edited by Richard Ovenden, Oxford University's Bodleian librarian, and Catherine McAlwain, Tolkien archivist at the Bodleian Libraries. As fans await the Amazon Prime series based on the second age of Middle-earth, that is highly debatable, here we are, uh, or here we have Tolkien himself engaging with the earliest adaptation of The Lord of the Rings, said McIlwain. I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name. She added, not only did he agree to the adaptation of his, of his book soon after publication, but he was willing to work with the scriptwriters to abridge the text and adjust the balance of narration and dialogue so that it fitted the requirements of radio and the limited time available. It's a very exciting and timely discovery. The series were broadcast shortly after Tolkien's original was published in three parts. While the first series covered the Fellowship of the Ring in six episodes, the second series condensed the Two Towers and the Return of the King into the next six episodes, and BBC bosses reduced each of them from 45 to 30 minutes, to the dismay of Tolkien. Lee said, 70 years on, we would treat it like a sacred text. These scripts reveal that, in the 1950s, they didn't have any inclination of how important a text it would be. He argued, had the books been out longer and become more established, then perhaps the BBC senior managers would have agreed to each episode lasting 45 minutes and even running to three series. Tolkien, who died in 1973, was instinctively wary of such dramatizations, particularly after seeing Walt Disney films such as Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, based on the darker 1812 Brother Grimm's fairy tale. 
In 1937, he wrote of his heartfelt loathing for Disney productions. Lee expressed surprise that the sheet bearing Tolkien's writing had been overlooked until now. While one scholar had noted its existence, it was not fully discussed and Lee is publishing it in his essay for the forthcoming book. It bears Tolkien's uh, redrafting of a scene in which Frodo Baggins, the hobbit who received a magic ring of invisibility, his companion Sam and the warrior Aragorn <laughs> refer to the evil wraiths, undead beings. Frodo, what has happened? Where is the Pale King? Sam, we lost you, Mr. Frodo. Where did you get to? Frodo, didn't you see them? The wraiths and the king? Aragorn, no, only their shadows. Tolkien gave a description of the wraiths to the narrator, who linked the scenes. At once the shapes became terribly clear. He could see under their black mantles. In their white faces burned merciless eyes. Lee said, Without the freedom allowed to him in the novel, he considered the best way to convey a description of the wraiths, first rather clumsily getting Frodo Baggins to say, I, I put the ring on. Then the shapes became terribly clear, and I found the... Sorry, and I could see there, and I could see under their black cloaks. I'm very sorry for my, my bad reading. Their faces were white with cruel bright eyes, but he rejected this, favoring instead the use of the narrator. The BBC files have also preserved audience reactions in the 1950s. One listener complained, if we must occupy the third program with fairy tales, then let us <laughs> have in <Enid Blyton. laughs> Oh, that's such a cruel... Um, you know, reaction. But the Observer's critic described the dramatization as uh, the best light listening for the next five weeks. All right, um, The Great Tales Never End Essays in Memory of Christopher Tolkien will be published by Bodleian Library, publishing in June. Very much looking forward to that. So, uh, once again, my friends, there are some people who might uh, say now uh, in the comments down below, oh, even Tolkien worked with adaptation, so he was not against adaptations. Yes, but once again, do I have to repeat myself for the millionth time? I shall provide some links in the description down below for my previous videos in which I say that there's no... Uh, that there are adaptations and adaptations, and there is a difference between adaptation and a disaster, which Amazon is most certainly going to make. And also, when an author is working on the adaptation, what more could you want? Right? Many people are dissatisfied with the ending of the Game of Thrones TV show by HBO. But you have to admit that George R. R. Martin worked very closely with the filmmakers and the, and the screenwriters. So it, if it was also his vision, partially, can we complain? We can complain, but to George R. R. Martin. All right, let me know in the comments down below what you think. And once again, for those who recommended this to me, thank you, thank you, thank you, and that will be all. Na Marie.